Okay, I'm going to go back through starting uh, a new document, um, dragging some things in, and just getting generally uh, set up. So I'm going to go over here in Photoshop to File, and I'm going to go to New, or you can click on the new file over here. And I want to make sure that this right here is changed to inches. And uh, the image I'm going to use is vertical, so I'm just going to type in a uh, actually, it doesn't matter. I'm going to type in 11 by 8 and a half, and uh, it's in inches. And you see here the orientation when it's blue. Basically, that's telling me it's going to be horizontal. I need a vertical, so I can actually click this, and it changes those numbers for me. I'm going to change this here to 300 because we want to have uh, plenty of resolution. And I'm going to hit Create. And my background is black. Um, I'm going to change that really quick. I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, White. Now I can see it. So then um, I'm going to grab an image that I have. And I'm going to drag this in. Drop it. And as I mentioned before, um, you can just drag this way to center it in. And I'm going to hit return and it's locked in place. So once this is here, uh, you see I got my uh, bottom layer, this layer, and what I'm going to do next is make sure that my rulers are on. Okay, so I'm going to go up to view as long as this is checked, there's my rulers up here. Then I'm going to go back to view and I want to create some guides. And I'm going to go to new guide. And basically what this does, it allows me to create these guides as kind of a safety net. We've talked about that. So I'm going to make mine a quarter inch. I'm going to type in point one, I'm sorry, point two five. Hit OK. There's one here. And we do this again. Uh, this time, um, since this is eight and a half uh, wide, I'm going to do 8.25. There we go. And then, uh, you know, as it goes, we'll do a few more of these. Um, another thing that you can do, um, it's not as easy um, to be uh, accurate, but I can click and hold up here on the ruler and I can drag down my own guides and you can see the Y axis right in the middle there. It's telling me where I'm at. I'm just, uh, that was a lucky, lucky move there. It looked like it worked and do a quarter inch here. You can see it's kind of tough. I'm trying and that's going to be good enough for right now. Okay. So I got these set up and then, uh, over here, and all these toolbars. And again, if you don't see this stuff, come up to Window Workspace. Um, I have my own custom one that I made for myself, but um, you can come up to Essentials, and then you will see all of these things here, these library adjustments, properties, all the tools are over here. Um, if you're missing something you can't find, you come up to Window, and then you can choose, like, I can't find something, um, you choose one of these and it will pop up over here um, and so forth. So I'm going to go back to my layers real quick. I'm going to make sure that this is selected. And what I'm going to do next is um, change the color. So I'm going to go into uh, adjustments. And this hue saturation, again, during this master tab right here, it's going to change everything. So quickly it's just going to make things uh, you know weird or fun whatever if you want to use a specific color um, you can select it here so if i want to mess with the blues down here you see this is kind of concentrated now it's only going to work with the blues okay so there's like hints of blues i can turn it up the saturation is going to increase the color let's see that there and the lightness is 
want it light, but you want to darken it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo all of that. Command Z to shortcut, that'll undo it, or Control Z on a PC. And I'm going to use a different adjustment. I'm just going to use um, the exposure. So if you add exposure, you're adding light. Okay. You remove exposure, it's going to get darker. This offset kind of works with those lights. It creates some of the richness. If you want a more of a matte effect, this might work. Uh, you know, if you want more of a dark and so forth. Gamma correction works with more, more of the light and dark of the contrast. And uh, I'm actually not going to alter this too much. To me, that looks pretty good. I got some good color. So generally speaking, this is a nice, uh, easy start to making some corrections. And if I want to add in some shapes, I can come over here. Um, this is the ellipse tool. If I hold down the shift key and drag, I get a perfect circle. If I just drag freely, let's see, I can get all sorts of weird shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this out just a little bit, maybe right here. And then uh, you can see either up here, you'll see um, shape. There's a fill. That's the color inside, the stroke, which would be the outside. Um, there's also a, a properties tab right here. And this will allow you to change colors and so forth um, like that. One thing that I had mentioned um, in class is I, if I have this solid color window open, when I venture off, you see there's that eyedropper. And then I can actually find a color on the screen or the picture I can work with like that. And then if I want to add some text right here. And again, it kind of comes out, um, the drug out the text. So it's more like a paragraph and it's always going to default to the text you used previously. So that it's not going to, it's going to show up as uh, one text or one type of font every time. Um, it's going to revert to what I used last time I was working on a project. So I think I'm going to just kind of play with my color a little bit. And then make sure I have my move tool. Let's kind of see how this looks. I'm going to delete that because I'm going to do a single text. So I'm going to delete it. I'm going to grab my type tool. I'm going to click once. And then increase it. You can manually punch in numbers too. You could type in 500 if you want, see what happens. Um, let's see. I call this my stuff. Let's enter it. Okay. You see all these layers are happening now. So one thing that uh, I talked about in class that I'm not doing right now, which is unfortunate, is naming them. So I'm going to call these uh, buildings ellipse one. I'm just going to leave that as is. And once I have like this highlight here, this shape, I'm going to go back to this effects. And I'm going to go up to, you can just click on blend modes. You can click on any of them really. And it just opens up everything right here. And then you have to choose which one that you want to use. So in class, I was showing the ellipse. And basically, multiply uh, is has a bit of transparency to it. That's what that blend mode is. I can change the color. I can turn this up. So it's 100%. And you really can't see um, the color. But... If I change this blend mode to normal, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK, just so I can zoom in here, you can start to see that tint. So we'll go back into my drop shadow. 
just kind of pull these out and you get a better view of that color, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to, I'm just going to change it to black. And then um, I'm going to change this back to that multiply. It just softens things up a little bit. And then kind of play around with the distance or the spread. Uh, me personally, I like to have very subtle shadows if I use them. Nothing too harsh, just because um, to me, uh, something like this, not that, um, isn't very believable. And it looks like it's burnt. So I like to do something that's very subtle like this, real soft. Um, a little more on the size. Okay, I'm talking a lot. And I'll turn down this a little bit. See how it softens it up really nice. There, a little bit of a uh, shadow. You can kind of see it sitting there. Um, something else that you can do, and we'll go back in here, and we're going to zoom in first. And these effects, there's this uh, bevel and emboss. This one's kind of fun to play with, too. So right now it says bevel and emboss. Um, there's different options of an outer bevel, inner bevel, and so forth. Um, smooth, if you want it to be, looks like it's a chisel hard or soft. I'll show you those. And as I turn on or turn up like the depth of it or the size of it, you kind of see that moving in there. I want to do an outer. I'm actually going to turn off this drop shadow. Now I'll leave it. We're going to do an inner bevel. And then you can kind of see that dimension showing up. I'm going to kind of keep it outward. So you can kind of see this little bit of shape coming. And uh, type the depth, size. Okay, um, if that's smooth, you get chisel hard, and you get that more hard effect. And these are just things we'll have to experiment with. So this is very much what we've covered so far. Um, you know, feel free to play with these a little bit, see what, um, you know, what you like, see if you have any questions and so forth, but just kind of play around with these. I really encourage like taking, if you got some time over the weekend, next couple of days to kind of play around see what happens um you know all these little uh things in here do something different and we'll get more into them later but that in a nutshell is where we're at so far